O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Dear friends in Christ, have you ever noticed how people can often see the exact same thing? Exact same thing, but in different ways. Golly, if you think about it, kind of uh, describes uh, a lot of what's going on in modern America today, does it not? And there are plenty of examples of that that I could share with you this morning, but I think I'll keep it on a more lighter side. I'm reminded of the familiar story of a woman who was uh, visiting some people who lived out on a farm. And she noticed there on the farm there was this pig limping in the backyard, had a wooden leg. She asked the farmer, what happened to that pig? The farmer said, oh, you mean good old Betsy there. Yeah, Betsy, she's a wonderful pig. Why, well, one night the house caught fire, and she oinked so loud that she woke us all up so that we could get out of the house safely. The woman said, wow, that's really something. Oh, the farmer continued, that's not all. One day our youngest fell into the pond. And Betsy oinked loudly to get our attention, and as a result, we were able to pull our little girl out of the pond just in the nick of time. The woman said, my goodness, that's truly a, an amazing pig you have there. But I still don't understand why it has that wooden leg. The farmer replied, well, ma'am, when you have a pig as special as Betsy is, you don't want to eat her all at once. Needless to say, the woman was appalled. Obviously, the farmer's gratitude did not run very deep for that pig, Betsy. No, given the fact that she was such a heroic pig, far from seeing her as dinner, as the farmer had done, perhaps someone else would have seen Betsy as being much more valuable. Instead of being dinner, perhaps uh, someone else would have given her a place of honor there at the dinner table. Like I say, perceptions, well, they can differ like that. The way you or I might see something may not necessarily be the same way someone else sees it. Say, speaking of how people see things... In our gospel reading today for this Thanksgiving day, there's an interesting insight for us at the beginning of verse 15. Let me just put it up there for us. It says, then one of them, referring, of course, to one of the ten lepers whom Jesus had healed, then one of them, when he saw, he was healed. When he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God in a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now, friends, did you notice that when this man saw that he was healed, it was then that he turned back to thank Jesus? Now, I realize that I may be stating the obvious here this morning, but the fact is, there is a connection between seeing what God has done for you and the act of thanksgiving. Those who truly see his blessings in their lives will naturally want to thank him. Well, those who do not see his blessings, those who you might say are blind to his loving kindness and goodness, well, their gratitude doesn't run very deep, if at all. So, what do you see in your own life? Do you see around you God's abundant blessings? Or do you find yourself, you know, straining to see those blessings? And you know, if you fall into that latter category, and let's face it, many of us do from time to time, if you're one of those who 
tends to see what the glass half empty rather than half full, well, maybe the best blessing of all that God can give to you this Thanksgiving Day is a new way of looking at the things around you. In that regard, let me share an old Jewish parable with you to illustrate how that can happen in your life. Uh, the story goes that there was once a very distraught man who went to his rabbi and complained, oh, life is unbearable. Well, why is that? The rabbi asked. The man explained, there are nine of us living in a one-room house and it's in an intolerable situation. Something must be done. We cannot go on living like that any longer. Oh, rabbi, the man proceeded to ask, what can I do? The rabbi answered, dear son, do this, do this. Go and take your goat and put it into the room with you. The man was quite shocked at the rabbi's words, not to mention a bit skeptical. The goat? But the rabbi insisted, just do as I say and come back in a week. Well, reluctantly, the man agreed to do it. And a week later, the man came back to the rabbi, but this time he looked even more distraught than before. Life is unbearable. I cannot stand it, he grumbled loudly at the rabbi. The goat is smelly and filthy. It's even worse of a situation than before. Now what am I to do? The rabbi told the man, go home and now let the goat out and come back in a week. A week later, the man returned, only this time his whole countenance had changed. Instead of his usual dour, downcast look, his face was radiant with joy. Teacher, he exclaimed to the rabbi, life is wonderful. We're enjoying every minute of it now. Now that that darn goat is out of the house and there's just the nine of us, the man's situation, of course, was the same as it was when he first came to the rabbi. The only difference was his perception had changed. He realized that he was actually blessed to begin with. You know, my friends, as the baptized children of God, we can make that same claim. In our own lives, we too, according to the Bible, have been blessed from the very beginning. As a matter of fact, we have been blessed even before the very beginning of time. I mean, listen to what it says in a place like Ephesians chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ for he chose us in him before the creation of the world. Yes, as incredible as it may sound, the truth is God had in mind to bless us even before we knew what blessings were. That's how gracious and loving the God of Holy Scripture is. The question, of course, is, do we see those blessings from God? Or, or have we perhaps taken them so much for granted to the point where we don't see them any longer? As you think about that, let me ask you another question. Do you know what the biggest Thanksgiving Day killer is? The biggest Thanksgiving Day killer. Do you know what it is? No, it's not all the rich food that we will consume today. No, in terms of our spiritual life, often what turns out to be the biggest Thanksgiving Day killer is the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's the day when everyone seems to, you know, shift their focus away from seeing all the wonderful blessings that God has bestowed upon them, and they start to focus on what they do not have, 
and what they now want for Christmas. You know, perhaps one of the reasons people fall into that trap and fail to see God's blessings in their lives is because, well, they're looking in the wrong places. For instance, uh, during this time of year, people will often spend a lot of time looking in stores, in malls, on the internet, or as it often used to be back in the day when I was a kid, as well as for many of you as well, they will look there at the Christmas catalogs and all the neat stuff that they want and feel that they just cannot live without. And yet, by way of contrast, compare that activity of how little time is spent looking in God's Word at all the neat, all the, the wonderful stuff we already have in Christ Jesus. No wonder so many are blind to the blessings of God because people don't take the time to look at what God has already given to them. Dear friends, let's change that perspective in our lives as we observe this Thanksgiving. As a matter of fact, let me help uh, us do that right now by taking you into God's Word, into Psalm 103, where we find, if you will, a, a catalog of blessings that come from God. I mean, just look at all that God has given us right there in the first five verses of that Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul, O my inmost being, Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? Do you see how right there in those few verses we find five blessings God has given us, five blessings of which we can truly be thankful for. He forgives all of our sins. Not just some of our sins, but all, every single one. He heals us from all diseases. If not here in this life, He certainly will heal all of them in heaven. And of course, the greatest disease of all, the one that, that is at the root of, of every one of the problems and trials and tribulations that we face in this life is that of sin. And yet, instead of letting our life decline into the pit and destruction of sin, we are told that He redeems our life from that pit. That is, He restores our life to its original created purpose before sin came in and ruined things. And not only does he restore our lives so that we can now have this living, active relationship with him, but we are also told that he crowns us with love and compassion and he satisfies our desires with good things. Yes, real good things. Things, my friends, that are eternal and everlasting. Wow, you talk about blessings. It doesn't get any better than that. And when we truly see all that God has done for us, well, our response is naturally to give thanks as that healed leper did in our gospel reading. Hey, in closing, let me just share one more story with you. It's about a lady, you know, who pulled up to uh, one of those drive-up windows at the bank. That is, if you're, the, you're able to get into the line closest to the building. And inside, of course, was the teller. And he was facing the hot afternoon sun, so he pulled down that large window shade that helped to, you know, block the sun. But at the same time, it made it difficult, if not impossible, for the customers to see him through the window. You know, it's one of those type of shades where, you know, he could see out, but those in the drive-up could not see in. 
At any rate, this lady, she pulled her car up there to the bank window in the drawer. You know how it goes there. It moved out to meet her. She put her, you know, deposit, and, and the drawer went back in. A few moments later, the drawer came back out there with her deposit slip and the money she had requested. She counted it and then put the money in her purse, and she was about to drive off. But she just paused and stared for a moment at the bank window. But of course, she was unable to see anyone there inside. Finally, after a few moments, she said, even though I have no idea who you are, I just feel I ought to thank you anyway. You know, my friends, in a very similar fashion, that's about the best, about the best the world can do when it comes to giving thanks. Try as they may, they cannot see God. That is the one true God. Nor do they really know the temporal, let alone the eternal blessings that God so lovingly and graciously gives. Sin, sin has blinded them. Oh sure, they may be able to say a generic thank you, but have no idea as to who they are saying it to. But for us, for us, God has been revealed in his word. The Holy Scripture uses his word to open our eyes so that we can see, see who God truly is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and how he has blessed us richly. Blessed us not only, of course, materially and physically, but most of all, spiritually. By that of giving his son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior from sin, so that we might be heirs of eternal life with him in heaven. And by seeing all that our gracious God has done, we will naturally want to thank him as we are doing here this morning. And not just thank him this day or this hour, but every day and every hour of our lives unto life everlasting. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ, our living Savior. Amen.